1 Corinthians chapter 15 Proof, process, and pending possession. Paul will give the proof of the resurrection, the process of the resurrection, and Christ has not taken possession of heaven and earth yet. It's still pending. Some of the Corinthians were saying that there is no resurrection of the dead. The Christian faith is based on facts, and there are eyewitnesses to his resurrection, the resurrection that will prove, even in a court of law, that it really did happen. But before we get in to our lesson, let's take a look at how to be saved. So Paul preached the good news of how to avoid the eternal lake of fire. Believe how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. So the new information here is our sins because the rest was according to the scriptures. So our sins in mystery. He rose for our sins in mystery also. And um, the Bible is, um, you know, divided into the main divisions in the Bible is mystery and prophecy. And we're living in mystery. And what was the problem? The problem was, wherefore, as by one man, and that was Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. So we inherited the sin nature from Adam, and then we all sinned ourselves. And so we were helpless and hopeless to try to keep the Ten Commandments because nobody could. Because we were born sinners. And it was given to the Son of God, Jesus Christ, to undo the wrong Adam did. So, Paul repeats um, what he had taught them uh, when he was at Corinth. Moreover, so in addition, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. So, Paul is declaring the gospel which he preached to them when he was at Corinth in Acts 18. And they received it and they stand complete in Christ. They're able to stand before Holy Father because they have received the Spirit of the Son of God, His righteousness. By which also ye are saved. So they're saved from eternal damnation. In the lake of fire and they're also saved from deception if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain so if they keep in memory that he preached these things here for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received so he delivered to them what he received by revelation from Jesus Christ how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So if they keep in memory that all of these thing, three things, these three elements, Christ's death for our sins, his burial and his resurrection are part of the gospel. So some were saying that no one's going to be resurrected. So if they remove the resurrection, which is part of the gospel, then their faith will be in vain. So what is this thing about the third day? The third day. When Christ was on earth, he said, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, 
so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Matthew 12:40. So he gave that sign to Israel. So, um, but many in Israel rejected the sign of Jonah. And what about me? For the wages of sin is death. So I earned sin. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 But when I believe the gospel that we just went over, that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again, then I received his spirit, his righteousness, his life. Because he was my substitute. He took the death that I deserved and imputed his life, his spirit to me. And this was solution for the sin problem. In Psalm 1610, God promised the Lord that he would rise again. For thou will not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So when Christ was on earth, he spoke to the little flock, which included the 12 apostles. And Peter, also known as Cephas in um, Aramaic for Peter, um, he said that to them, Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke 12, 32. So because they believed that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, they will receive the kingdom on earth and rule with him. What about Paul? Well, Paul was persecuting the little flock and dragging them to Jerusalem to be tried. And it says here that when um, Paul and Saul was consenting unto his death, that was to Stephen's death. And Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost. So when they killed him with, by stoning, then they, uh, the Jewish leaders committed this blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. This is the Messianic church. There are more than one church in the Bible. And they were all scattered abroad throughout all the region of Judea and Samaria, except for the apostles. So the 12 apostles stayed in Jerusalem. Then in, that was in Acts 8.1. In 9.1, Acts 9.1, it says, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. And he got some letters to chase after those that were scattered even outside of Israel to Damascus and on that road to Damascus suddenly there was a, a secret or unprophesied event because Jesus Christ appeared to him and Paul was the last one to see Jesus Christ and those that traveled with him they didn't they saw a light but they didn't see the Lord but Paul did and they heard a sound, but they couldn't, didn't hear what Jesus said. And that's in Acts 9, 7 and 22, 9. Therefore, we believe that the rapture will also be a secret meeting. So God, the Lord already had 12 perfectly good apostles. And now he made Paul his one apostle to the one body of Christ. The rapture and the judgment seat of Christ are exclusively found in Apostle Paul's letters. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. So Paul is going over the eyewitnesses. First he was seen by Peter and then the twelve altogether. And after that he was seen of about of above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain unto this present but some have fallen asleep so Paul is the only one that records that 
500 people saw him at once, and some of them were still alive when Paul wrote this letter, but some had died. After that, he was seen of James, that's a half-brother of Jesus, then of all the apostles. So he was seen of all the apostles again, all 12. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. So he was also seen of Paul on that road to Damascus, the one apostle. For I am the least of the apostles that am not me to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. He's not fit to be called an apostle because he persecuted um, the little flock. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace, was, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. So <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord in him helped Paul through love for God, for sparing him from, you know, the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Um, so he worked harder than all the other 12 apostles. Therefore, whether it was I, Paul, or they, the 12, so we preach and so ye believe. So they preached the resurrection. Both of them preached the resurrection. Now is going to come the key verse. But before that, let me just say that Peter preached the resurrection of Christ as bad news. Ye men of Israel. So he, Peter spoke to the men of Israel. Hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you. As ye yourselves also know, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. So he, it was determined by foreknowledge of God that if he gave his creatures free will, that he may have to go and rescue them, the Lord Jesus. And he willingly did so. Ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Acts 2, 22, 24. So, um, death could not hold the Lord Jesus Christ because he was sinless, son of God. And they crucified and slayed their Messiah with wicked hands. But he was resurrected uh, from um, paradise where he w was. For those three days and three nights. So here's the key verse. Now if Christ be preached. That he rose from the dead. How say some among you. That there is no resurrection of the dead. If we all preach. That Christ rose from the dead. Why are some among you at Corinth saying. That the dead are not going to be resurrected. The dead believers. So, um, we are going to find out about the glory plan that God has to exalt his son in heaven and earth. So, originally God made a perfect heaven and a perfect earth. But then there was rebellion in heaven when Lucifer rebelled. And then um, they, uh, Lucifer went to the earth with his fallen angels and then God caused a, um, it to be uninhabitable. So it became void of those inhabitants. And then God made it nice for Adam, but then Adam sinned and had spiritual death. So Adam needed spiritual life. So Christ provides spiritual life by imputation. And he pro those people who have his spirit or his righteousness on them ha will be able to be resurrected. So they're going to have life in the new heaven and the new earth. So God has his glory plan to restore 
what was lost, the old heaven and earth. So if you still are not saved, get saved. Read Romans chapters 1 through 5 over and over again till you are saved. So, Christ's resurrection is the, an essential part of the gospel. Christ's resurrection is tied to our own. Paul will now say if and for in his argument. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. So, if the dead are not going to rise, then Christ didn't rise. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching, you know, of the resurrection is for no reason. It's worthless. And your faith is worthless. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. So, in in the four Gospels um, and, and early Acts, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and early Acts, the twelve preached Christ cru uh, crucified and buried and risen. And then Paul is doing the same. But that's good news. And so, they would be false witnesses if, if the dead aren't, believers are not resurrected. For if the dead rise not, is not Christ raised. If, if the believers are not going to be resurrected, then Christ didn't rise. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. So if Christ didn't resurrect, then it didn't prove that he was the Son of God, and so they would not... Um, be forgiven be and his his sacrifice would not have been ac accepted then they which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished then the believers will not have eternal life if in this life only we have hope in Christ we are of all men most miserable if we don't have a future resurrection and no hope of eternal life we're doing this for nothing and wasting our time but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept so Christ is risen from the dead that's a fact and he has become the first fruit or the first one to rise in a glorified body of the believers and so when you have something that's first you're going to have more fruit to follow for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Since a man sinned, a man had to, you know, uh, he, a man had to come and make it right. And so that's why the Son of God became a man. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So everyone died physically and spiritually in Adam but Christ undid and reversed what Adam did so everyone that's still in Adam will die but whoever is in Christ will be made alive but every man in his own order Christ the first fruits afterward they that are Christ at his coming so Everyone's going to be resurrected in their own order. Christ was the first one to have a glorified body. And then after that, at his coming, the believers will receive resurrected bodies. So there's that secret coming at the rapture and then the second coming for Israel. So let's take a look at that. But first, let's read this. Then cometh the end. So when is the end? When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. So everything that's against the Lord, 
and against him being exalted in heaven and earth, will have, he will have put that evil power down. For he must reign till he, he hath put all enemies under his feet. So he's going to reign for a thousand years. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest or evident that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. So the Father is not going to be uh, under him. So first fruits is a holy day for Israel. Um, the morrow after the Sabbath or the first day of the week, as it says in Leviticus 23.11. That was the day that Christ died, uh, rose on that Sunday. So in Revelation 20, it, verse 6, it says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. So this is the first resurrection for those in prophecy. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So let's take a look at the timeline that's embedded in the Bible between um, Genesis and Revelation because all the word of God is truth. But the truth has to be rightly divided. And so we divide out the mystery from the rest of the Bible on either side. Because those in mystery will live in heaven. And those in prophecy on the either side of mystery will live in the kingdom on earth. If they have believed what God told them. So um, the original heaven and earth were good. Then there was, you know, rebellion in heaven and a judgment on the earth. Then God made the earth nice, but then Adam sinned. And after Adam came Noah, then the Tower of Babel, and that's when the Gentiles were put aside. Then God called out Abraham, and after Abraham came Moses, David, and Daniel. Then Eventually came John the Baptist and Jesus Christ, and he had a ministry to the little flock, which are the little red men. And he was crucified, buried, and rose again after three and a half years of ministry, and he rose from the Mount of Olives. Then ten days later came the Holy Ghost on the little flock in the upper room, and they gave a one-year extension of mercy to Israel, but it was rejected in Acts 7 when Stephen was stoned. Then instead of sending the prophesied tribulation, God interrupted prophecy, delayed the tribulation, and Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ appeared to Paul, also known as Saul of Tarsus, in Acts 9 and began the dispensation of grace called the mystery when the body of Christ is being saved to live in heaven and um, we are now waiting for another appearance of Jesus Christ to rapture the body of Christ and that will be our resurrection and then we'll go to judgment seat of Christ for evaluation of service done on the earth then um, there will be a little time um, Psalm 83 will take place there then um, comes the tribulation where more little red men or little, you know, flock believers will be saved. We were the little black men that get resurrected, the ones that believed uh, what we had to believe. So in the middle of the tribulation, um, Satan and his angels will be cast out. And um, then comes three and a half years later, Christ's second coming to set up his, uh, onto the Mount of Olives, where he left. And he sets up his 1,000 year reign. And after that 1,000 year reign, when Satan had been bound, he's let loose. And then he, he um, leads a bunch of Gentiles 
because the Gentiles didn't have glorified bodies. Only the Jews did. And uh, he rains down fire on Gog and Magog, from Magog, that, and then um, comes the white throne, great white throne judgment of the lost, all the lost throughout all the ages, and then um, the the Gentiles in prophecy can eat of the tree of life, then hell and death are cast into the lake of fire, and then comes the end. Where, when the Lord Jesus Christ gives the new heaven and a new earth to the Father and subjects himself to the Father. So wrong thinking leads to wrong conduct. Paul w received the capstone of revelation for all that Christ had accomplished on the, the cross for both groups. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So God will be um, in all in the new heaven and new earth. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all. Why are they then baptized for the dead? So what is this thing being baptized for the dead? Well, Paul explained that in Romans 6, 4. So baptism is identification with. We were identified with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection when we believed. Know ye not, this is Romans 6, 3, and 4, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. This is, we not, there's no water here. It was a spiritual baptism into his death. We were identified with his death on the cross. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. So we were also buried with him that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So we have a new life. We have his life in us. So we have a new second chance to live for, for God. So he died for us, but we died and rose with him also. And so that is being baptized for the dead. And why stand we, um, we in jeopardy every hour? Why are we risking our lives to help people be saved? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. I am making a defense of the resurrection Paul says, so we can all um, in, uh, be in Christ Jesus. I, um, I assure you that I die daily to my sinful flesh and put myself in subjection to the truth of what God said. So we can all rise with, with the Lord. If after the manner of men... I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. What advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. So he, Paul has fought with men at Ephesus that are Satan-inspired. And what, what good is it going to do him if, we're not gonna, if he's not going to resurrect with us? You know, in that case, just enjoy life now because, you know, we're never going to, that's all we have. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt God, good manners. So don't be deceived by this evil communication that there's no resurrection because then you're going to not, you know, ha have good conduct. Because if, if, if we don't rise, then all his work was useless and worthless. 
Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. So awake to the righteous saints that you are, for some do not know the entire gospel, because you can't leave out the resurrection. And I'm speaking this to your shame, because you're not preaching the full gospel. But some man will say, so now he's, he's, you know, put them to shame for trying to exclude the resurrection. So now he's on a different topic. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? So he's going to explain the process of the resurrection. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not the body that shall be, but bare grain. It may be chance of wheat or some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it has pleased him, and to every seed his own body. So don't be f a fool. Um, something is not going to, someone's not going to come alive unless he dies. And that which you sow the body that you're sowing is not the body that you're going to have but he god may use some bare a bare grain or an atom of of our body um, to make us a body as has pleased him and to every seed his own body so the body you sow is not the same body you are going to have um the glorified body will however retain the identity and individuality of the person all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of men another flesh of beasts another of fishes another of birds there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another so there's different bodies the heavenly bodies will be different from the earthly bodies that are glorified. And there's different glory for both of these. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So stars have different magnitudes of, of light. So a star with a zero magnitude that's the brightest and the dimmest that we can see with natural eye is a five. So, you know, some will shine brighter than others when we have the glory of the Lord in us, in our new bodies. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. So the the body is sown in corruption. It, it decays and it, it dies it is raised in incorruption so it's going to have um, a glorified body it is sown in dishonor because it had sin it is raised in glory because it's not going to have any sin it is sown in weakness because it couldn't keep the law it is raised in power because now it can keep god's law it is sown a natural body subject to death it is raised a spiritual body a special body that can go through the ceiling there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body and so it is written the first man Adam was made a living soul the last Adam was made a quickening spirit so Adam became a living soul but the he lost his you know his spiritual life but the um, let's see um, let me see oh, the last Adam is a quickening spirit so he can give his life his spirit spiritual life to the spiritually dead people okay Howbeit, or you know, however, 
that was not first which is spiritual but that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual so first we had the natural and then we're going to get the spiritual body the first man is of the earth earthy the second man is the Lord from heaven so his his death proved that he was a man and his resurrection proved that he was the son of God as is the earthy such are they also that are earthy and as is the heavenly such are they also that are heavenly so the predicament is that some are still in Adam but some are now in Christ and those that are in Christ will receive a glorified body like his Paul wrote for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our vile body our, our present body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself Philippians 3 20 21 so once we have our, our glorified bodies he can use us to subdue um, the heavenly places to himself now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God neither can corruption inherit incorruption so our flesh and our blood it's corrupted and um, it cannot inherit incorruption so we're going to receive these glorified bodies and the kingdom of God is made up of heaven and earth and everyone needs to be in Christ and have received his imputed uh, righteousness Peter was in Christ, but he was not in the body of Christ. Galatians 1.22 Okay. So, um, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound so the last trump is the second trumpet the first the trumpet sh that shall sound is the first trumpet and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed so we will be changed at the last trump so for this corruptible must put on incorruption so the dead saints have to put on incorruption and this mortal the living saints when the rapture happens must put on immortality so let's take a look at that these are the three sounds at the rapture for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout body of Christ come up here with the voice of the archangel to Israel and with the trump of God so the first trumpet blast, the dead in Christ rise up. Then we which are alive when the rapture happens are caught up at the second sound, the second blast, the last trump. Um, to get, we are caught up together with them to, in them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So here's the Lord. And here are the ones that were alive when the rapture happened so he's explaining this that it's going to happen so quickly that it will be like a twinkle in the eye a fraction of a section a second so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption that you know the the dead saints and this mortal shall have put on immortality then okay and the, the mortal the ones that are alive when the rapture happens then shall the living saints be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death 
where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? So he's quoting Isaiah 25, 8 and Hosea 13, 14. So when both the dead and alive saints have their new glorified bodies, then he can say that there's victory over the grave and death. So in Isaiah 25, He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. So um, both groups will have victory, Peter's and Paul's. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. So, um, sin caused the death, and the law made it worse. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The, the Lord was victorious on the cross. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So <clears throat> he's, he's saying that, you know, you're going to have a reward at the judgment seat of Christ. Don't be moved from knowing that your body of Christ members during the dispensation of grace in the mystery and your, your labor is not in vain. So we're saved to serve. Now, Paul was saved as out of due time because he was saved into the mystery not prophecy and we're saved to serve abound in the work of the Lord your labor is not in vain in the Lord the certainty of the imminent rapture motivates us to serve God now Paul says that our ministry is a labor of love in 1 Thessalonians 1 3 right doctrine produces right thinking resulting in right conduct so he's corrected the error at Corinth and said, yes, the resurrection is going to happen. His resurrection is tied to our own. So now they can have the right conduct and, you know, live without sinning by being in the spirit. What's God's will? Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? 1 Timothy 2.4 the knowledge of and the truth is to understand the mystery given to us by Christ through Paul. Mission possible. To take as many people as we can to heaven before we die or go up. Our job is to get everyone out of Adam and into Christ. Only one life, it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. The son's death and resurrection allows the father to impute his righteousness to two groups and to resurrect them. Christ has two ministries, one for his earthly believers, Peter's group, and one for his heavenly believers, Paul's group. On Calvary, Jesus saved two groups to give them his spirit and is able to restore the two realms, heaven and earth. If you would like more help to understand the mystery, please get God's secret um, which is a hundred pages that goes over an overview of the Bible to help you rightly divide. We also have 1 Corinthians, a commentary, and um, rightly dividing 1 Corinthians study guide, which is also a commentary on 1 Corinthians. And these books help you much more than I can in this little time. We also have, Why Was the Earth Without Form, Void, and Dark? The body of Christ will replace the fallen angels that were judged in Genesis 1, 2. We have Treasure Hunt, Volumes 1, 2, and 3, which is all 13 of Paul's letters, which you can power through quickly. We also have um, Brightly Dividing First and Second Thessalonians Study Guide about the rapture and the certainty of the pre-tribulation rapture, which is also First and Second Thessalonians. Our website is MarianneManley.com. The YouTube channel, Salvation Rightly Dividing, 
comma, and the rapture. Truth Be Told also carries our videos. The email is acts9grays at gmail.com. Find us on Rumble and X and WhatsApp and on Facebook. Please like, share, and subscribe because it was checkmate at the cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thanks for watching. God bless.